Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today I want to show you how you can use Microsoft Whiteboard. What is Microsoft Whiteboard? Well, it's a free form digital canvas that you can use to bring ideas and content together. Now, probably the easiest way to think of it is it's just like the whiteboard you might have in a classroom or in your office where you write ideas up and you could work together with others, except instead of being a physical whiteboard, it's in the cloud and you could work with people remotely. First, we're going to look at how you can use whiteboard in Microsoft Teams. That's probably the place where you're going to use this most often, and that leverages whiteboard on the web. Once we look at that, we're going to jump over and take a look at the whiteboard app. It's a little bit more feature rich than the version on the web, but it requires an installation. All right, well, why don't we jump on the PC and let's see how we could use whiteboard. Here I am on my PC and I'm currently in a Microsoft Teams meeting titled Kevin Cookie Company Brainstorming. You know, it sure would be helpful if we could use a whiteboard to brainstorm. How do we launch the whiteboard? Over on the top controls for the meeting, let's click on the share content icon. This opens up the sharing tray and we could share all types of content. Tucked away on the far right hand side, there's the option to share a whiteboard. Let's click on this. This opens up the Microsoft whiteboard. I have two different options. I could simply be the presenter and no one can collaborate with me on the whiteboard or I could have others collaborate with me. I'd like others to collaborate with me on this brainstorming session so I'll make sure that's selected. This now drops me into a blank canvas and the world is my oyster. I can now get started with my brainstorming session. The version of whiteboard that's used in Microsoft Teams is whiteboard on the web. This isn't quite as feature rich as the app, but the good thing is it's extremely easy to use and it has most of the core functionality. Most people will probably end up using whiteboard that's integrated in Microsoft Teams. Okay, enough talking. Let's get this brainstorming session started. The first thing I want to do is I want to offer up some framing for the brainstorming session. The best way to do that is on this top toolbar, I want to insert some text. I'm going to click on the add text icon. This inserts a text field and I can now type something in. I'm going to enter why opening a Kevin Cookie company is a great opportunity and this is for franchisees. Now I would hope most people would just realize that this is a great opportunity, but it probably makes sense to just add some notes to make sure that we're all aligned. To add a note, once again, I'm going to go up to the toolbar and I'm going to click on the add a note icon. When I click on this icon, this inserts a note onto my whiteboard and I'm gonna type in the first reason that comes to mind and that is that there's a charismatic founder. I'm glad we started with this one because I think this is probably the most important reason for opening a location. Now once I type in my text, if I hover near the edge, I can now drag this note beneath my header. So I'll place this here and I'm going to insert a few other notes for reasons why this is such a great opportunity. I've inserted a few different notes for why opening a Kevin Cookie Company location is such a great opportunity and you can see them all here. Now let's go back up to the toolbar to see what else we can do. I have all of these different pen tools available. I have four colors and I also have an eraser. So let's say as part of this brainstorming session, I wanted my team to put a check mark on the items that they think is most likely correlated with this being a great opportunity. Anyone could come in now and you can add check marks onto the whiteboard. So here it looks like my team has checked the charismatic founder as the main driver and maybe we'll put one check mark on the unbeatable recipe. Now I could annotate and draw up this whiteboard as much as I want just like I could with a traditional whiteboard and if I go up to the toolbar I can use an eraser if for whatever reason we mistakenly annotate part of the screen. Now that we've annotated the screen, I want to show a few other tools that we have available. If I go to the top bar, we see the pan and zoom tool. If I click on this, I can now click on the whiteboard with my mouse and I can move the whiteboard around so I can pan around to the content that I want to look at. Along with panning around, I can also zoom in and out simply by scrolling the mouse wheel. So if I move the mouse wheel out, I could scroll out and look at all of this real estate I have for a brainstorming session. This is space for lots and lots of ideas. If I move the mouse wheel forward, this will zoom in on the content so I can get super close to all of the content on my whiteboard. 
Now that we've looked at all of the core editing and annotating functionality within Microsoft Whiteboard on the web, let's see what else we can do. When I go up to the top right hand corner, there's a settings gear. Let's click on that. Within settings, I can export this whiteboard as a PNG. Maybe I want to export it and print it out so we could hang this within our office. And right underneath that, I have the option to toggle on or off whether participants can edit. So let's say that we had our brainstorming session and I have all these votes on the charismatic founder. Maybe I want to turn it off now so people don't change their vote to one of these other categories. Let's say that our whiteboarding session is done and we've finished all of the brainstorming that we want to do. I can stop presenting at this point and this will end the whiteboard session. Now let's say we leave the meeting and for whatever reason I want to get back to my whiteboard content. Don't worry, it's very easy to get back. Within Microsoft Teams on your calendar, simply navigate back to the meeting where you had this whiteboard session and click into the meeting. Once you click into the meeting, across the top you have all of these different tabs. On the far right hand side you have the option for a whiteboard. If you click on this, this will open up the exact same whiteboard that we were just in. So this is a very easy way that you can navigate back. Now with the whiteboard in Microsoft Teams, I mentioned before that this is whiteboard on the web and it doesn't have the full rich functionality of the Microsoft Whiteboard app. So let's take a look at the Microsoft Whiteboard app to see what we can do there. You might be wondering, well, how do I get the Whiteboard app? Luckily, they positioned a button here and it's very convenient to open in app. Let's click on this. When I click on open in app, this opens up a nice illustration. And here I have the option to download the Microsoft Whiteboard app. So here I could get the app. If I already have the app, I could also open my Whiteboard within the app. And let's say I changed my mind and I actually enjoyed using Whiteboard in Teams, I could simply continue using it. Let's click on get the app. When I click on get the app, this lands me in the Microsoft Store and it opens up the Microsoft Whiteboard. If you don't yet have the app, you can install it and if you already have it, you can launch it. I already have the app installed, I'm going to go ahead and launch. This drops me in the Microsoft Whiteboard app and I mentioned that it's a lot more feature rich compared to what we have on the web. I'm going to walk through what some of the key differences are. This lands me on the start page of Microsoft Whiteboard, if I click over here this will drop me into a new whiteboard or I could jump into an existing whiteboard by clicking over here. With an existing whiteboard I have a few different actions that I could take on it along with simply being able to open it. If I click on the context menu down here I can invite additional participants to work with me on that whiteboard. I can also export the whiteboard. I have some additional export options within the whiteboard app. On the web I could only export as a PNG. Within the app I could also export as an SVG and I could delete it and here I could rename the whiteboard and give it whatever name I want. Now this is the Kevin Cookie Company recipe and unfortunately I can't share that with all of you. That's proprietary information. So instead of jumping into this whiteboard, let's start a new one. Once again, this drops me into a completely blank Microsoft whiteboard. Let's take a look at what some of the additions are and the differences are from the whiteboard in Microsoft Teams. The controls by default are down on the bottom. Let's run through what you can do here. When I click on the first button, this opens up inking mode. And just like on the web, I have my four core colors with the addition of some additional colors and I also have a highlighter. But most of that's pretty similar. One of the key differences is I now have a ruler. Let's click on ruler. This inserts a ruler onto my whiteboard and if I click on the pen, I could use the ruler to draw a perfectly straight line. You might be wondering, well, how do I adjust the degrees on the ruler? If you're on a touch display, you could simply press on the ruler and adjust it to whatever degrees you want. On a PC, you could use your mouse wheel while hovering over the ruler to adjust the degrees. So I'll set it to zero degrees and here again, I can now draw a perfectly straight line. Along with a ruler, I also have a selection tool. So here I could select my lines that I just drew and I could also undo and redo. To go back, click on the check mark on the left hand side. On the main screen again, I also have a text tool. Let's click on this. I can now type in some text. I'm simply going to type in yay. 
Once I type in my text, I can move it around to whatever position I want. Now, some of the additional functionality that we have here, when we click on the text, you see this control area appear above it. You can like different texts that people enter. So especially if you're collaborating with others and someone brainstorms a great idea, you can give it a thumbs up or in a sense, vote for different ideas. Along with voting, I can choose different colors for my text, I can copy it, delete it, and I have a few additional controls on the right hand side. Now, just like with whiteboard on the web, down below I can insert a note. Just like on the web, I can drag this note to wherever I want it, and although one of the key differences here too, I can also like it, and I can adjust the background color of my note. Now, along with inserting notes, if we go back down to the bar, I can also insert images. This opens up an images menu. I could bring in images from my computer, from Bing, or even from my camera. Let's pull an image in from my computer. I just pulled in an image of a handsome guy. Just kidding, I know, that's me right there. And I've inserted this onto my whiteboard. When I click on the picture, I have a few different controls that I can click on. In true brainstorming fashion, if I want it to look more like, say, a scribble on a whiteboard, I can click on this first icon and this will just do an ink grab. So if you imagine me as a blob of ink, this is apparently what I would look like. I'm gonna undo this. Here too, you can give a thumbs up and there's an option to lock to background. When I click on this, what that means is I can now put content over my photo because the photo in a sense has become part of the background. I can right click on the photo and then I can undo that. Now, one of the nice things about using the whiteboard app is it's very easy to align objects. So here you see, as I move my picture around, I can align it with other content on my whiteboard. Here, for instance, I have my note and I have my picture and this is helping me top align both of these objects. Now, as I'm inserting items onto my whiteboard, I could go down to the controls and I could insert a picture, I could insert text, I could change to the drawing tool. Although an even easier way to do it is as you're working on your whiteboard, you could simply right click and here too, you get access to all of the same controls that you get on the bottom bar. Down below, there's this plus icon. This is the insert menu. When we click on this, we see all types of content that we could simply insert. Let's go through and see what some of these are. I could insert a note grid. A note grid is simply a collection of notes that are in a nice fancy container. So kind of a nice way to group your notes. Next, let's see what list is. When I insert a list, it's a perfectly formatted list. So when you're brainstorming, it helps you organize your content a little better than maybe what you'd be able to do on your own. Next, let's see the follow-ups list. When I see follow-ups, it's very similar to my list, but it has some additional columns, including assigned to, and then also the number of likes. Back within the insert menu, I can also use different templates. When I click on templates, here we see a ton of templates on the right hand side. They have templates for brainstorming, a Kanban board, a retrospective, an effective meeting, SWOT analysis. The list goes on and on with all of these different template types. Let's click on persona builder just to see an example. Now this is getting pretty fancy. This is leveraging notes, groups, lists, and it brings them all together in the form of a template. This is a pretty nice way to kick off a brainstorming session without having to configure everything up front. If you've ever done a physical brainstorming session on a whiteboard before, there's typically some upfront work you have to do. With templates, you eliminate all of that work and you make brainstorming super easy. Now I've inserted a bunch of things and I've shown a lot of the core functionality. You might be wondering, well, in Microsoft Teams, it's very easy to collaborate with others. You simply kick off a meeting and you can start working on it. How do you collaborate with others in Microsoft Whiteboard? Well, up in the top right-hand corner, you have this person icon with a plus. If you click on this, you can invite others to work with you on this whiteboard. You simply have to click on this toggle and this will turn web sharing on. If say you're in a Teams meeting, a Skype meeting, a Zoom meeting, you can leverage Microsoft Whiteboard. You're gonna need to copy copy this link here, you could click on copy link, and then you could send it through chat and everyone can join the whiteboarding session. Let's say that you're done sharing your whiteboard, you can also toggle this off and this will revoke the sharing link. 
Now we've gone through much of the core functionality within Microsoft Whiteboard, but there are a few really cool features included in Whiteboard, and I wanna briefly touch on those. If we go to the top right-hand corner, we have the hamburger menu or the settings menu. Let's click on this. Here you could turn on active pen. So let's say you're using a Surface device with a pen. You could use your pen to write on the Whiteboard. There's also something called ink to shape and ink to table. Let's test out ink to shape to see how this works. If I go back onto the whiteboard, I currently have the pen tool selected. Let me try my best attempt at drawing a square. That's decent. Oh, but ink to shape finishes the job for me. I'm also gonna draw my best attempt at a triangle and here it converts my attempt to a perfect triangle. That's pretty cool. Back within the settings menu, I also can turn on or off object snapping. When I inserted the picture, I was able to snap it to other objects that were already on the whiteboard. So pretty nice one to use. Underneath that, I can export this, and like I mentioned before, one of the benefits of using the Microsoft Whiteboard app is not only can you export as a PNG, but you can also export as an SVG or a vector graphic, so the quality is much higher than exporting as a PNG. So now if I wanna print out my Whiteboard brainstorm session and really blow it up on the wall, SVG is the way to go. Back in the main menu, a few other controls that I have, I could format the background. Let's say I want a different color, you know, white's a little harsh on the eyes, and I can also choose different grid backgrounds just to help you with whatever type of session that you're hosting in Microsoft Whiteboard. All right, that was a quick look at how you can start taking advantage of Microsoft Whiteboard in both Microsoft Teams and using the standalone and more feature-rich Microsoft Whiteboard app. If this video helped you learn how you could start taking advantage of Whiteboard, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other topics in the future, leave a note Note down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye.